Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you Spidey Classics episode number 11. That's right fans, and today we continue our story with Craven's The Last Hunt. That's right fans, and this takes place in the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 293, as you can see right here. Uh, that's right, and we can see Craven uh, on the cover holding um, Spider-Man's black costume in his hand, doing the old traditional rain dance around his uh, uh, tombstone there. And there it says, uh, here lies Spider-Man slain by Craven the Hunter. That's right, fans. <coughs> really cool cover here. Again, this series continues to be very, very dark. And uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best spider events or stories that has crossed over with all the Spider-Man books um, from it, from the 80s. When you have Spectacular Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, and it was really cool to see this crossover. Uh, artwork continues to be very solid in this issue. You can see here we get to see these opening pages right here as you get to see Craven laughing and uh, accepting his defeat. Uh, you know, accepting Peter Parker's defeat, that he finally defeated the spider in this particular issue. Uh, really cool paneling in here as well. Uh, this issue also features the um, uh, the vermin uh, in here as well, as you get to see throughout issue throughout the issue too. And then there's also another supporting cast member, which we all know and love, uh, which is Mary Jane in here. So uh, the artwork in this particular issue, it, it continues... It, it, it's very, very solid. So, and here's another cool picture of, of Mary Jane right over here as well. So, what happened in this part of Craven's The Last Hunt? Well, this is obviously, we know that this is part two. And uh, in this issue, it's otherwise known as uh, Crawling. So, in this particular issue, we get to see uh, Craven the Hunter. He actually uh, witnesses here. We get to see that. Uh, he sees that. Spider-Man is dead, and he wears the black costume now, and there's nothing more than just defeating the spider, but it was obviously uh, being the, the, the spider as well, being a superior spider. spider. So you can obviously, this is kind of like, you know, the early incarnation of superior Spider-Man, uh, because that's what Craven the Hunter wanted to be, a superior Spider-Man. Uh, throughout the issue in the beginning, you wind up seeing this woman that gets captured uh, in the sewers. And uh, what we see is that Vermin is the one that's behind. And uh, as you read throughout this issue, you get to learn a little bit why Vermin is in the sewers, who put him there and whatnot. And it was a combination of Captain America and Spider-Man. So Vermin wants to go after Spider-Man uh, and get revenge in him. Uh, in the issue, we also find out, yes, that uh, Mary Jane and Peter Parker are married at this part. They're, they're newly wedged. They're not even living together at this point in time. And uh, we find out that Peter is late. He's a few hours late. He's supposed to be helping them move together in, in their brand new apartment. And she's thinking, worst case scenario, that she has this gut feeling that he's dead. Um, once Craven uh, leaves the gravesite of Peter Parker, uh, he feels that he has to be, again, this superior spider. He has to be part of the spider. And he winds up taking these herbs and, and drinks them and whatnot. And, uh, and he starts getting all drugged out. And he's hallucinating and, and stuff like that. And he starts seeing these crazy spiders or whatnot but he feels that it's that it that it's part of his his process is growing to become again that superior spider-man and uh you can see again he keeps hallucinating and, and whatnot so really cool stuff here uh and, and really awesome artwork how these dialogue boxes are 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 written so you gotta give credit here to the to the letterer and to the writer here for just coming up with a very creative way of, of doing the writing in this book. Um, later on, we see that Mary Jane is so paranoid that she winds up uh, going out into the rain and, and starts searching for Peter and seeing if she can find Spider-Man. And she kind of doubts herself. She's like, well, what am I going to do? She's like, am I seriously going to 
sit there and go, hey, Spidey, uh, you know, hey, you're late, you know. But as she's going out, you know, we have we see these guys that are up to no good that are looking to probably possibly rape Mary Jane. And then what happens is uh, we get to see which we think is Spider-Man, but uh, it really is not because once um, Mary Jane sees Craven here or Spider-Man punching these guys, he practice, practically almost kills him, jumps away, and Mary Jane realizes that that's not her Peter Parker. So she obviously knows that something is up there. Craven escapes the manhole, and uh, he winds up going to go after... Uh, Spider-Man as well because he has saw Spider-Man so and that ends the end of the issue and then the next issue continues in Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man issue 131 that's where it continues next uh, so what did I think about this particular issue I thought this issue was pretty interesting to see Craven now not content on killing Spider-Man, but being Spider-Man. He feels that he had to take it to the next level, and I thought that was really well done here. Again, I really love him going through these hallucinations, trying to be part of the spider, and then it was interesting to see Vermin in this issue, too, about having his revenge going against Spider-Man. So it looks like Vermin and Kraven the Hunter in the future are going to wind up uh, doing battle against each other. And I really love the Mary Jane moments in here, um, you know, being, you know, trying to be positive about things, but yet she has this worst case scenario in her head as well. So uh, it, it was kind of interesting to see that there. But uh, I love the artwork with her just lying there on the bed waiting for her husband to come home and uh, her realizing that it was not Peter at the very end because of what Spider-Man did to these just these common you know, street level thugs, uh, was uncharacteristic, uh, for Spider-Man. So again, it will be interesting to see, you know, how Craven continues to be this superior Spider-Man and how him and Vermin possibly meet with each other. And what does Mary Jane think of all this? And where does she think Peter actually is? And when does Spider-Man actually return in this series? Well, we'll soon find out. So guys, uh, after reading this one, I don't think it was as strong as the first part because it's got that shock value that Spider-Man is dead. But I still thought it was an interesting issue to see uh, Craven's journey to become that superior Spider-Man. So I think I'm going to give this one a four and a half out of five stars. Great artwork, great lettering, great word dialogue boxes. Just something totally original that we haven't really seen before. Uh, in this timeline of in the late 1980s or mid 1980s. So fans, in the comments below, tell me what you thought of Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man issue 293, and uh, what is your favorite Amazing Spider-Man story of all time or epic event of all time? Leave me your comments below. I'm curious to see what you guys think. So fans, as always, thank you for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. And this has been episode 11 of Spidey Classics. So fans, take care. Thanks for watching and see you real soon.